and this one's a little difficult, Kelly, because of the injury report, right? And, and the WNBA injury report has been a little bit steadier than the NBA. But as we get closer to this break, it's becoming a little funkier and hard to judge. Um, doing an awful lot of those NBA tip-off shows, we often at 4 p.m. Eastern time, 4.30 Eastern time, still don't know how NBA lineups are going to end up. I still don't really know how this one's going to line up. But for the Mystics, Stephanie Dolson, their starting center, ex-UConn player, has been a very good addition to the starting lineup, and she did not play last game. They get beat by 21 without her. For the Minnesota Lynx, another UConn grad, Nafisha Collier, has been their best all-around player, and she's questionable at this point in time. So you see a little bouncing back and forth here in this line. Maybe somebody in the know who knows who's going to go and who's not, but I think there's an illness running through the um, locker room with the uh, Mystics, so the Stephanie Dolson situation could keep her out again. So it makes it difficult to play, but I would say this. Washington is basically an underdog every single game because they're one of the worst teams in the league, but they do fight. They're 7-3, and three, I believe, against the spread on the road, mainly because they get an awful lot of points from the odds makers. Um, but they're a one-trick pony. They really about – six, eight games into the season because their particular injury list has been so deep this season. Um, they kind of went to threes are better than twos theory. Shoot a lot of threes. As I mentioned, kind of a one trick pony, but they are number two in the league in three point percentage. That's good for them. What's bad for them is Minnesota is the number one three point defense in the league. So if that gets negated here, I find it, um, it's difficult to see where Washington's going to come up with points against this Lynx defense. Not only are they the best three-point percentage defense, they're the best overall defensive rating in the league. And Washington team total here is listed at 74 and a half. It seems high against the Lynx. I don't think Washington can get the 75. So as a free play today, I think the best way to look is at the Mystics under. The Lynx also have a little bit of motivation here. They're on a one and three string after being, I think, in second place in this league. They've been one of the four best teams all season long. But again, the fatigue might be settling in for some of these teams. But Lynx at home here after losing the other night to Connecticut, a game in which they had a 10-point lead, I think they'll be motivated. And if there's one thing you can count on with them, it's always their defense. So for me, it would be a look on the Mystics team total under 74. Yeah, for, for those um, – viewing here and that will view 20, uh, 26 and 16, 25 and 16, I think, plus 26 units on the season is what the total is. Ranks number two over at Wager Talk. We're going to have a 3% play on this particular game, um, which goes in a couple of hours here. Uh, it would have been, I would have rated the total team total higher, but I had to downgrade it simply because of the movement in the line. And, and just really quick here, Kelly, let me use this as just a general statement. I know we like to give a lot of, um, you know, a general um, info to folks that are just beginning betting. When you're betting the WNBA, it's kind of important to get in on these overnights because these lines swing more than any I've seen in quite some time. Um, they'll jump like we see today in this Liberty game. So we've been trying to, advance bet these games so that you get the better number we know closing line value sometimes ends up in that garbage can but it's always good to be on that side 